This is Houston Cold, one of the most recognizable faces in 3D editing, although lately there's been a bit less of that 3D magic in his reels, because as he says himself, Video editing is dead. Still, despite what he says, people keep asking how are animations like his made. So today, we're going to recreate one, and we'll do it entirely in Da Vinci Resolve. Can you guess which version is the original? To spend 1,500 on a new iPhone to replace their previous generation iPhone. If you went with number one, you got it. Let's jump in. This is not a tutorial for someone opening Fusion for the very first time. I won't be explaining what a merge node is, what a mask does, or how transform works. So if you've already played around with Fusion and know the basics, you'll be just fine. I'm focusing more on the creative approach and scene structure than on clicking every button from A to Z. Don't worry, there'll be simpler stuff on this channel too. Hit subscribe to stay tuned. The animation we saw in the intro is divided into three scenes. Let's start with the first one. Everything here was built in 3D space, entirely from scratch in Fusion. I begin by adding a Fusion composition to the timeline and opening it in Fusion. This is where I lay down the structure of the scene, the 3D environment where I'll place all elements. I'm using an image plane 3D, which lets me position objects in space, closer, further, up, down. Then I add a 3D camera, which I animate to create movement, zooming in and out. At the end of the node chain is the renderer 3D. Without it, nothing would show up. It's essential for rendering the full scene. Scene one is built around three key elements. A white background, created using a basic background node placed far back. A red square with text, made with a background node and shaped into a square using a rectangle mask. The text phrases, people are and willing, which transition into each other using a dissolve node. There's also a character, just a stock animation I pulled from a library. It wasn't black by default, so I used a color corrector to darken it. I brought the figure closer to the camera and duplicated it using a duplicate 3D node. At this point, I animate two basic camera movements. The first is a zoom out, the second a zoom in. Both are done with transform 3D nodes placed behind the camera. As the camera zooms in, the entire scene shifts visually. Colors are inverted using invert color. The red square stretches vertically, pulling the text upward. The first phrase transitions into the second using the dissolve, and I adjust the color of the figures. One subtle detail here, the red square, or rather its outline, starts out large and wide. As the scene progresses, it smoothly shrinks down to match the exact width of the text. And since we're talking text animations, I actually made a pack of 46 ready-to-use text animations for DaVinci Resolve. They're modern, customizable, and work straight from the edit page. No fusion needed. If you want to save time and still make your videos look dope, check out the first link below. Use code TEXT10 to get 10% off. And thanks for supporting the channel. Time for scene number two. At this stage, I've already added the basic effects, soft glow and vignette, to establish the visual tone of the animation. Full stylization comes later. Invert color affects everything that comes before it in the node chain. So if we pass our rendered scene through invert color, the entire image gets flipped. To keep new elements from being inverted, we have to add them after the effect, in a new structure, with a new 3D space, and a separate camera. Scene two starts with the camera pulling back from the previous setup revealing a new composition. All elements here are positioned closer to the camera than in the first scene. The first element is a red text. It's just a text plus node with a write on animation, so the letters appear one by one. I also add soft glow for a subtle light effect. Then I place it on an image plane 3D, positioned closer to the camera. The next key element is the ATM. Let's style it first, then place it in 3D space. The ATM graphic was generated using AI. I combine it with a red background using a merge node and set the blend mode to linear light that darkens the image and helps match the overall color tone of the scene. On top of the ATM, I add a white rectangle. This is a background node with a rectangle mask. That rectangle becomes the display screen. Two text elements appear on that screen, scrolling upwards. These are two separate text plus nodes merged together using merge 
and then animated together using a transform node. Inside the texts, I use a follower to add delay between letters. I animate the offset parameter under transform and adjust delay under timing. I also animate the opacity parameter so the letters appear one at a time. To keep the texts within the bounds of the screen, I add a mask. Here's how the structure should look. Texts go into the foreground input of the merge, the display rectangle goes into the background, and the mask connects to the third input, limiting the visible area of the text. At the top of the screen, there's also an ATM label. The one generated by AI wasn't great, so I created my own. I placed it over a black background that hides the original, then added my version on top. I animate it using transform, moving it from left to right. I enable edges, wrap, so the text loops back once it goes off screen. Just like the ATM screen, I also mask it to keep the animation contained within a defined area. Finally, I add lens distortion to give the image a slightly curved look, like we're viewing it up close through a lens. The whole structure, screen, texts, ATM, goes onto one image plane 3D, which I move closer to the camera. During the transition from scene one to two, the camera pulls back and I animate the opacity of the image plane from zero to one, creating a smooth and natural transition. At the very end, I add a white square outline near the to spend text. It doesn't animate, it's just a simple visual detail to complement the composition. Now it's time for scene three. Everything I add here is placed closer to the camera than in the previous scenes. I start with the text. It's just a simple text plus with a write on effect. Behind it, I place a black rectangle. Just a background with an inverted rectangle mask that changes width to create a curtain-like slide. The text and background are on separate image planes. Between the text and the background, I drop in an iPhone, a 3D model downloaded from Sketchfab in FBX format. I import it through Fusion Import FBX Scene. The model was way too big and laying flat in 3D space, so I scaled and rotated it using a transform 3D node to fit the scene. Then I connect it to my 3D space. Behind the iPhone, there's a second text saying iPhone, positioned further in the background, also on its own image plane. In the shading tab, slot two, I change the outline color from red to white and offset it slightly to give it a double outline effect. Now onto the movement. The iPhone scales up by animating the size parameter with some rotation on the Y and Z axis. At the same time, before the move finishes, I fade out the first text and fade in the second by animating their opacity. The camera starts by pulling back and then zooms in as the iPhone grows. Next up, a white background and three words. The white background is just a rectangle sliding down from the top. The texts are three separate text plus nodes, each animated with its own opacity to make them appear one after another. I merge them together, put them on an image plane, and bring them into the 3D scene. I also add a camera move from left to right. At the end, I throw in a background that looks like something spilling, kind of like ink or oil. I made it my own way. If you want a separate tutorial on how to make that, drop a one in the comments. If you want something similar without the full setup, just animate opacity on a background layer or search for an ink reveal stock transition. While the camera keeps moving, three final words appear on screen. You can reuse the earlier text animations here. Just bring them in with opacity. At the end, I throw in a soft glow to give the text a bit of shine and smoothness and one small detail. While those last words fade in, the camera slightly zooms in again. Now that the structure is done, it's time to stylize. First up, the soft glow. It adds a subtle shine and makes the whole scene feel more polished and cinematic. Next, a classic vignette. To break the digital perfection, I overlaid a texture with subtle film scratches, barely noticeable, but enough to make the frame feel tactile and lived in. And finally, the cherry on top. 
I added a stop motion effect that simulates a lower frame rate. It makes the animation look like it was rendered in 15 frames per second, even though the timeline stays smooth. That slight stutter brings in a handcrafted, stylized vibe. Because here, it's not about smoothness, it's about character.